Okay, we're going to take a look at some free fall questions. And the first one is quite simple, where an object is dropped uh, in the absence of air resistance. So we're going to have uniform acceleration. And the object's dropped, uh, at, so it's released from rest. And uh, it falls for five seconds through the air as a projectile. So we call this a free fall question or one-dimensional projectile motion. Sometimes it's called that. One dimensional because it's in a straight line, okay, falling straight up and down. Two dimensional is when it goes up and down and left and right. Okay, this is one dimensional. <clears throat> so this object is dropped, it's released from rest. So the initial velocity is zero. The only piece of information given in this, the only number that's given is the five seconds. So it takes five seconds to fall. But you know that if it's in free fall near the surface of the Earth, we get to use negative 9.8 meters per second squared as the acceleration. So the acceleration is negative g. Remember that g has no sign. g is the acceleration due to gravity. It's the acceleration due to gravity. 1g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared near the surface of the Earth. It's different at different ele at elevations. Uh, it's also different near different planets. The moon has its own acceleration due to gravity, which is less than the Earth's because the moon has its own gravity. That's different. Um, Mars has its own gravity. The sun has its own gravity. This is the acceleration near the surface of the Earth because that's where we are. And in my classroom, it's roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. We're using negative because um, it's being pulled down. Gravity acts downwards. And we're saying up is positive, therefore down is negative. We are looking for uh, the height from which it's released. The height from which it's released. Well, height, th these, uh, these um, variables here are not about the height of the platform it's released from. These are not about the height from the platform from which it's released, which is what we're looking for. No, these are about the object that falls. And the object that falls, look at this, these, these equations over here. There is no equation over here that has h in it. Instead, the equation that we're, the, the variable that we're looking for for the object that's falling is its displacement. And so that's going to be for part A. We'll look for delta y. Excuse me. Uh, we'll look for delta y, not delta x. This thing is not moving horizontally. It's falling. And that's the y-axis. Okay, we'll look for delta y. Okay, wherever you see a delta x here, that's just generic. That was for horizontal, but we're not in the horizontal axis. We're in the vertical, so put a y in there. Okay, um, I do want to put a little subscript here next to all of these things as I go through them. Uh, we, we're getting used to two-dimensional motion where you have x's and y's in the same problem. So we are going to become a little more specific about this. Lots of subscripts around. Okay, so delta y is a question mark. Okay, well, what equation has initial velocity in it, has time in it, and acceleration? And displacement. Displacement, initial velocity, time, acceleration. This equation, you cannot use this. A lot, lots of folks want to use this equation here because they think they know the final velocity. The thing's falling. Is it going to stop when it hits the ground? Not when it has an acceleration of negative g. It only has an acceleration of negative g when it's not touching anything. So that would be before it hits the ground. All right? And its velocity before it hits the ground is not zero. All right? As long as it's falling, that's its acceleration. As soon as, it, as soon as it touches something, its acceleration is no longer that, and you can no longer use that in your equation. So the um, velocity that we're going to solve for is the velocity with which it strikes the ground. In other words, immediately before it touches anything. Okay. Coming back to here, though. Uh, I can't use anything with velocity in it because I don't know it. All right. So that really, that's the only equation I have. Therefore, delta y equals v sub zero y times t plus one half a y t squared. That's going to be 0 times 5 plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 5 squared 
of course, 0 times 5 is 0, not 5. Some people do that. Ah! And uh, let's see here. That uh, comes out to be 122.5 to, to two significant digits, and I do want this to be to two significant digits. 122.5 to two significant digits is 120 meters. Okay. For part B, I want to figure out. Well, oh, sorry, that's negative. Excuse me. That is, it falls 120 meters. Therefore we can conclude that the height of the platform that it was released from, it must have been 120 meters up. Okay? The thing is dropped, it falls 120 meters in five seconds, so it must have been released from a height of 120 meters. Okay? That is a, is a um, solution that was the conclusion of that. All right. Now, for part B to find the velocity, to find the velocity here, uh, there's a number of equations we can use now. We could use uh, this one, this one, or the, you wouldn't use that because it doesn't have V in it. It makes sense, though, just to use this equation right here. That seems pretty simple. Again, you could have done these out of order. That would have been just fine. I'm going to put a little subscript here again. I know that's just a pain in the rear, all these subscripts, but it pays dividends in the future. Get used to it. All this stuff is in the y-axis. That's why we're putting those there. So, negative 9.8 times 5 plus 0 it's going to be negative 49 meters per second. Okay, that's its velocity. Its speed is 49 meters per second. Its velocity is negative 49 meters per second. Right, it's traveling at, how fast is it going? 49 meters per second. What direction? Downwards. The negative sign indicates down. Okay, 